Hey boys and girls, welcome back. I got a new pattern here for you today. Um, not necessarily new, just something I haven't tied for you before. Um, this is called Trout Candy. I've seen it um, just called candy, steelhead candy, whatever fish you're feeding kind of candy. Uh, but it kind of falls into what I'm working with uh, here recently, you know, winter months, I'm just filling up the box. This is uh, something, you know, that I have used before. And um, I had some jig heads here that I'm trying to get rid of, some older hooks that I really don't like the shape of. So I'm kind of cleaning out my boxes, trying to make whatever I can uh, with the materials that I have. So, um, this is one of those things I'm just going through bags and bags of stuff, um, feathers and uh, all kinds of different things here. Um, but the most important part of this that, uh, you know, I want to get into is the soft tackle. Um, I was doing a little bit of research and uh, everybody does this differently. So it really kind of depends on what you need for the situation and for the bug. But when we're dealing with you're an infant, you know, this is a size 12. It's really about the biggest that we're going to run into. So whenever we're dealing with soft tackle, um, obviously the length and the size of the feather um, is important. You know, when you're tying uh, a soft tackle, you're more or less taking the stem of the feather, this is a pheasant feather, um, and you're using the tips on one side or on both sides, okay? Um, if you catch bugs in the stream, you know, you start paying attention to, you know, the naturals and what they look like, you know, they don't have 14 legs they don't they don't have 20 legs you know they have six legs at most a couple antennas um, so to wrap soft tackle on there and on there and on there um, you're kind of defeating the purpose if you're trying to tie something a little bit more natural um, you know on this bug that we have here probably 10 to 15 different fibers you know wrap the whole way around the hook and you can see that, I don't know, to me it almost looks a little overdressed. But uh, as it's swimming through the water or, you know, flowing through the curtain, all of these soft tackles start to move back. And you don't want it, for one, to foul the hook. Um, but for two, you know, their legs aren't twice as long as their body. So you don't want it, you don't want these fibers to really extend past the length of the hook. Um, regardless if it's a mayfly, regardless if it's a caddis emerging, but typically, you know, when they are emerging, they're bigger. So to tie this on a size 12, um, it works. Once you get to a 16 or a 14, which you still have emerging bugs at that size, it gets really tough to, uh, you know, get these soft tackle fibers to where they're sparse and the idea is to create some flow um, you know some movement in them so it looks like little legs little antennas things like that um, that the bug is using to try to swim free so let's uh, get into here you know kind of what we're looking at today um, what i have here is a three millimeter uh, insta jig head by hairline um, that's this one it's in fluorescent pink, obviously. The hook we're using. Um, here I got some Orvis. This is their 1POR, which is just their nymph hook. For the ribbing that I have, um, I use on these ones the medium size. Um, probably could, could get away with a larger size. I'll show you some of the ones that I tie, you know, with what they call a midge size. And uh, this is by far the most natural looking. And that's in a root beer color. Um, the underbody just have some Vivas uh, gold that's wrapped underneath. And that's what, uh, you know, you can kind of see all the little sparkles and stuff in there. That root beer is dark enough to give you the good brown color that I typically, you know, use here on the Lohanna. Um, 
There's an amber. There's, you know, the one I use most outside of this is clear. And the easiest way to do that is, and we'll, we'll show you here with this, we're gonna coat the hook with that um, tinsel and then just wrap, you know, with the root beer, tie it off up front and then tie our feathers in. Uh, the feathers are really what I wanna concentrate on most. So let's, uh, let's get right into this. Now these Insta Jig heads have to be glued on. Well, they don't have to be, I do. Um, I like to glue them, put them on, you know, a little foam square here and then use them as I'm going through this. The uh, thread I'm using, just the Semperfly Nano Silk. This is their brown. I just twisted that all up. Get this started here. And when you start looking at a soft tackle, I, it really all depends on how you fish. Um, I like to swing a lot of bugs, especially through the bottom of a hole, uh, you know, from a position a little bit upstream of that and I do really well with that when you start to get into some of these other bugs and you want to have you know those legs and things like that on a soft tackle because it's imitating a bug that's trying to swim away and uh, if you're bringing something across the current obviously that's a trigger for the fish um, to uh, you know notice something a little bit bigger and notice that it's moving not with the current that's a big uh, big thing so what we have here with this d-rib um, and it's called d-rib because it's shaped like a d it's flat on one side and i don't know if you can see that on the camera or not but you want obviously the flat side down that's what you're going to tie to the hook okay once you Get that cinched on you can kind of stretch this out a little bit it is pretty durable um, but it's not extremely flexible um, not like using some other uh, products you know like uh, stretch tubing um, and the reason I like to de-rib the stretch tubing is round so it rolls and um, you put it under any kind of tension you know it will stretch out and get thinner and it's just a little bit more difficult to use than this d-rib um, I kind of try to avoid that to be honest all right we got our pencil Wrap this up a little bit. Kind of want to build it up just a touch, especially on the back area here, right where the you know it starts to go to flat. Sometimes these plastic products, like I said, will roll a little bit. The D the D rib doesn't so much, but um, what can happen sometimes since it's a little bit stiffer uh, it doesn't want to conform to that part of the hook and you'll get a little gap uh, in there so the good thing is this uh, tinsel will help alleviate that you know so that you can't really see that type of thing but you can still get um, you know those little bumps in your abdomen there tie this off as I throw my tools across okay so then we're going to take our tinsel and we're going to wrap this up from the very bottom just touching wraps and this is kind of where your color variations come in you know you can use that's why i like that clear uh, d-rim because you can Put a different color tinsel on and create all kinds of variations. Too many to pick from. Oops, I just folded that. So these are just slightly 
overlapping wraps and you do want to take that the whole way up to the bead because there's not really an abdomen traditional abdomen on this pattern it's kind of where the uh, the d-rib comes into play Okay, we're gonna trim off the excess. Tie that off so I can use the rotary function spice. So I wanna spend some time on those feathers. All right, so just like with anything those first two wraps on this are probably the most important to get things set make sure your spacings are where they need to be and then we're just going to wrap this up a little bit of backward pressure Try not to put too much tension on that D-rib. It'll sit in there and make those segmentation or make that segmentation a lot more pronounced. And right there is typically where you start to see some issues. Just like that. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Okay, we're gonna use those touching wraps the whole way up to the bead. Maybe a one extra wrap just to kind of fill in that hole in the back side of the bead a little bit. to that bead as we can okay so that's your body uh, thousands of patterns you can use that type of segmentation on you know with that underbody almost gives it a little bit of a holographic look um, you can kind of see this pink one maybe this has like an underbody of tinsel with a clear and it kind of gives it almost like that translucent look that you see a lot of the bugs have um, to where there's an outside body but you can kind of see through it and see their innards so to speak all right so when we are picking feathers uh, a lot goes into this surprisingly and um, you know my son he lives out uh, out west sends me a lot of birds but mostly pheasants, things along that line. And the feathers that you're gonna get off of a rooster pheasant are much bigger than feathers you're gonna get off of a hen. So um, I'm running out of those types of things. So I used to raise quail and pheasants at home and I've saved a lot of that material. But essentially uh, what we're gonna get off of a quail, you know, here's uh, what a backside of a, like a speckled hen looks. And you hear the term partridge, but a pheasant is a partridge, a Hungarian partridge, a quail, a grouse. They're all essentially the game birds. But they have this kind of modeling on them, um, you know, barring on them. Some of them have spots. Some of them, um, you know, just have some good barring. But this uh, particular piece I've had for 25 years. Um, and... Uh, all of the shorter feathers on it, which were, you know, closer to the top of the back, um, you know, I'm running out. So all these ones down here are like twice the size of what I need. And, uh, you know, you start to look for options. You know, what can I use? If I put a soft tackle on there and, you know, it's a full size, you know, church window from, from the back of a pheasant, it's gonna be really long. And, um, 
it might work. You know, if not, try it. You know, what's the worst that could happen? But um, you start to run into that, that problem. So to find better materials, obviously you're gonna tie better flies. And uh, when you strip these types of feathers down, um, you need to measure them. So essentially this was, like I said, a church window and we want the legs to be as long as the shank of the hook. So this is a good way to look at this. Typically you're gonna go from the front of the bug and this one would be okay if we were tying it in in the front. But once we move it back, you can see it gets, you know, out past the end of that a little bit longer. Um, and it ends up being too big. Different feathers. This one's close, still a little too big. But this is the one that, uh, you know, we're gonna use. This is off of quail. And you can see, you know, how much shorter and how much smaller that feather is compared to this feather. So that's the big difference. Um, I was watching these guys on Fly Fish Food. They had a special on these new chickens. <laughs> that uh, They're hen chickens of the chickens that we get dry fly ta hackle off of. So their feathers, instead of being, t you know, basic, you know, feather shaped, you know, that we're gonna get off of a partridge, more of like a fingerprint size, uh, they're longer, like your dry fly hackle. So um, that's the, the latest thing coming up and up. I haven't been able to try that yet, but supposedly the sizing is good, down to size 16, they were saying. Um, you know, if you buy a full bird or, you know, a full skin. But when we get into the feathers that you have, so essentially we're just gonna be using the tips of this. Um, you wanna strip off all of the fluff that's on the bottom here. Uh, when I put these on for this type of pattern to keep things sparse, um, I only use half of the feather. So I will get to this point and as I'm looking at the feather, okay, we'll say concave side up, I pay attention to the right side of the feather as I'm looking at it, uh, because that's gonna be the part I'm gonna strip off the left side so that I have the bare stem to wrap around this. That creates that little bit of sparseness, creates a little bit more um, pop as far as what direction the tips of the feathers are spraying, if they're more straight up. Um, just gives you a little bit better look on it. And this pattern that we have here was enough to show that. But if you look at this feather here, you can see that, you know, the right side of that, lots of broken fibers in there. That's typically what you're gonna find out, um, you know, when you buy these packs and things along that line. So this is from a natural bird. So I would expect that, you know, it's gonna be beat up a little bit. Um, when we look at, another type of this is the feather that, that we're going to use here but you can see how perfectly aligned this is a really good feather how perfectly straight and how perfectly aligned those tips are and that's um you know that's kind of what you want you know that's going to give you more consistency on the front and uh you know the way that those barbs are are going to pop out so what we want to do is keep that side of the feather Okay, now if you're picking feathers and you find out, oh, I have a left, left-handed, I have a left-sided feather like this one. Okay, um, the way I'm gonna show it to you is to tie it in concave side down, okay? Um, if you have a good left side of it, tie left side down and take out the right side of, of the feather. So there's plenty of ways that uh, you can get it in there and it is pretty basic, but you do have to be cautious when you're stripping these feathers. Um, you know, they're extremely delicate. So you really have to make sure that you're holding on to you know, the right, right spot of the feather when you start trying to peel that away a lot of times. Um, you know, you'll just break the stem. So this is what we're looking at. That's a finished feather, ready to go. Okay. And we're gonna separate 
like this. Turn this upside down. And I am just gonna tie in this little piece right on this side, loose. I don't wanna break that stem. And then I'm gonna wrap back a wrap or two so that I can catch more of this side of the stem, okay? And we're gonna trim that out. Okay, hackle pliers. I would say when I wrap these, you can see that it is starting to pop those little fibers. And I am wrapping backwards. And it looks like maybe two wraps I got out of that. Okay. And then we're gonna take this and weave our way back through. Pull these back just a bit, kind of separate them a little bit. I don't really want to put any heavy tension on this just yet. Most times, and uh, I'm gonna have a couple other videos um, using some soft hackles on some normal patterns that I have. But most times the tendency is you want to pull these back and back wrap. Uh, if you do that, they're gonna be laying more along and flat, you know, you're flattening that type of feather. So um, to avoid that, uh, obviously, uh, try not to wrap back as much or so much as, you know, what you uh, think that you need to, because we still have to put a collar on this. So we want the collar to do the work. Um, as long as we have that feather you know, secure, it's not going anywhere. We can pull these back just a touch to get them out of the way. Um, next thing we're putting on here, my new favorite product. This is Pheasant Tail Ice Stub. I'm going to be using this on everything. Um, decent size amount we're going to put in here because we do have to take up a lot of space because this is one of those Insta Jig heads. If you've ever used those, there's a big hole in the back of them and it just seems to suck up a lot of material. So don't be afraid to put a lot on. And then, uh, you know, you can always pull it off at the end. I'm gonna slide that up there. Bring these fibers back. That first wrap. Yeah, since there isn't an abdomen technically on this pattern, you know, there seems to be holes that you need to fill a little bit. And you can see how that collar, since it's a little bit bigger, starts to push these fibers back. Okay. Let's sink that down in there. guys that's your trout candy All right, try some up use up what you have uh, I'm gonna be tying some some other bugs I found some new techniques that uh, kind of want to show you if you're gonna be attempting or starting to use some of these uh, soft hackles and uh, you know look for those in the weeks to come all right guys
Thanks for stopping by.